What is Dracula's favorite turn-based JRPG? Final Fantasy. Welcome to the stream. Happy Thursday, my friends. Great to be here with you. Sparrow the Dragoon is first in chat tonight. Very happy you're uh, here right at the beginning, Sparrow. That music that you got to enjoy, my friends, is uh, Sparrow's newest song that he's uh, shared with us. And wow. Uh, there are links in chat there if you want to take a, uh, a deeper dive into Sparrow's music. His uh, Twitch channel where he does DJ sessions and his SoundCloud page. Um, I really like that song, Sparrow. Um, is that is that the version? Does that use effects or could that actually play on C64 hardware? Because you talked about going either way with it. It doesn't really, it, I'm just curious though. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to, uh, it doesn't matter to me, uh, you know, whether or not it could play on the hardware, but it is a curiosity. But, uh, there's so many parts of it that I really like. I like that, uh, the noises that it starts with, the kind of like, you know, beep boop noises that I think are like, I, like, I think they're going for like, like the, like sort of the, sort of like, almost like stereotypical retro computer sounds, but there's a quality to them that's almost mechanical. It kind of makes me think of a wrench turning a bolt, that first rhythm that's at the beginning and the uh, and uh, near the end. Um, but I, I, I actually really like that quality of it. And those, uh, the sort of, well, it's going to beep at me. I need it to stop. I don't want it to be quiet, but I need it to stop. The, uh, the like, three-note melody that uh, sort of washes over everything throughout the majority of the song. I really like, I really like those tones. Um, when they first come in, they're like slightly dissonant, but um, yeah, they have like a watery sort of effect to them. And Jelly said that when I was sharing it with her, that uh, she said, she said the song has a very the song has a very wet sound. And when she said that, when she said that, there was also something happening in the rhythm that sounded like um, it sounded like brushing noises. So I was thinking about like I was thinking like being inside of a car going through a car wash <laughs> at, at around the one minute mark. I think is when she said something like that. Um. But that, but yeah, that that melody with it, with just the three, with like the three stark, clear tones, um, I I really like that, and I like the way that it sounds over top of that, over top of that fast, snappy drum that comes in, um, like halfway through. Um, it's really good. It almost like it almost has kind of a bittersweet quality to it, though. Like I could hear, I could see that becoming really melancholy, and so. I'm actually glad. I'm actually glad that those three tones stop before the end of the song, so you get a little bit of relief from that. Because I think if it, I think if they carried all the way through to the end, it would kind of, it would kind of end in in a more somber way. But I think because because they stop, they stop, you get a little bit of a, a release from it, and the song, and the song doesn't end as melancholy as I think it would. Um, but yeah, I really like that song, Sparrow. I don't know if it's the, uh, I don't know if it's just the, uh, you know, if it, if it's the newness influencing me, but it might be my favorite thing that you've done. Um, I think there's a strong possibility it could be. Um, there's a bit of reverb on some of the string type sounds. I really couldn't get away with not using it other than that. It's all, it's all SID. I love it. Sounds very wintry and snowy. Yeah, I can get that too. I think it's good. I really don't have anything negative to say about it. I think that, uh. You know, like I can see, I can see things, you know, if you had done them a little differently, I can see how there, there are things that I wouldn't like as much as if you did it differently, but you didn't do those things, <laughs> which is good. 
But uh, but yeah, I, I really like that one, Spiro. It kind of reminds me, like, again, because it's not like, I'm not really familiar with the genre. Um, so I hope I hope you'll see this as a compliment, but it kind of reminds me of uh, the Postal Service. It kind of reminds me to the... Uh, to their tracks, which I'm really, a, which I'm really a big fan of that album. Um, loyal disloyal, welcome in loyal. Just got home from work 15 minutes ago. Right on. I hope that it was a, a smooth day for you. And even if it wasn't, I hope that now you can uh, let it go and just hang out and relax with us. Have a good time. My night's going very well. Going very well. Dracula's backward, and I feel like I'm in an alternate universe. Yeah, I used Dracula last night as well, and I don't. I I typically don't like to have the same image up for consecutive vods. Um, but I there was nothing else I really wanted to throw up tonight, so I just thought, well, I'll I'll just mirror it, and then it'll look different. <laughs> But it makes it a, uh, it makes it easier for me to tell uh, to tell the nights apart if I if I change the uh, if I change the image out from night to night. Stoked to be here. We'll leave it at that to keep tonight positive. Right on, loyal. Thank you for the positive vibes. Uh, Ferrum Tusk, welcome in Tusk. Whip only, a very difficult mission. They have sent you on Agent Frowny. I know. I know I'm a... Makes sense, weirdo, Jelly says. <laughs> well, when I'm looking back at the VODs, it makes it easier for me to tell which to tell where the nights begin and end if they if we use the same image through the whole night and I change it every night. I know which videos go with each other. <laughs> because I like to because I like to split the VOD every time we change games. Alright, let me uh let me hit reset and we'll get rolling. Two things uh on the menu tonight, my friends. We're gonna play Castlevania. We'll do probably at least two runs through this. Maybe three. I'd like to spend, you know, no longer than three hours at the most, but uh, it's whip only practice. Um, yeah, it's really difficult. <laughs> so we'll do two runs, and depending on how long they take, we'll do a we'll do a third one. And uh, after that, we'll switch over and we'll play Dark Souls until I uh, run out of uh, energy. So for this run, I am picking up the whip upgrades. This isn't quite a low percent run. It's close to one. I want to, uh, ideally, I will avoid every invincibility, every rosary, and every uh, sub-weapon. But, you know, I'm not going to be too hard on myself. If I make a mistake and pick something up, um, that's not going to be grounds for, uh, for reset if we have an accident. Not at this point, because uh, I'm still not good enough at this run for it to matter. <laughs> but, uh... If I can ever become good at it, we will uh, we'll start being real strict about uh, about those kind of things when we uh, get to the point where I may be able to achieve this deathless. I'd kind of like to set a rule of no meat either. Uh, you will see me picking it, <laughs> picking it up uh, right now, but I, I'm kind of thinking when we go for the Deathless run, I may also try to do it with no meat. But that will be, uh, you know, like I said, that's going to be a long ways away. We're still in practice mode for this. 
Uh, GG again on showing the Iron Golem. Who has the bigger axe in Dark Souls? <laughs> Thank you. That Iron Golem, he was a... He was a major obstacle. <laughs> I'm glad to be on this side of him. I wish I could have... Uh, I wish I could have defeated him without having to use any of my humanities, though. That's the real shame about the battle. Is that I, I spent two humanities to do it. And I... I could have... I probably could have done it without because I got him down I got him down to his last segment of health one time without even needing to use any we will by the way reset if this bat kills me I'm okay with losing a life but I'm not okay with losing a life on the first level We're really just sort of swapping damage. <laughs> My goodness, that's ugly. Afternoon, Shino. Welcome in. When you do Deathless, is it whip only too? It, I mean. So I have I have completed one deathless run of this game and that was with the items. That was just any percent. Anything goes kind of a run. Oh, this doesn't disappear. I have to I have to pick it up cuz it's on the stairs. But I didn't gain any advantage from it. Um So I yeah, I've I've done one deathless run that was just a sort of anything goes kind of run and I'm practicing I'm practicing to do a second deathless run that will be whip only that's a crazy accomplishment in itself thank you it's uh you know I feel I feel pretty good about it the only thing is that uh when you have the sub weapons there's a lot of uh there's a lot of cheesy strategies you can do. <laughs> Even without the sub weapons, like kind of the thing about this is you don't have to be very good at the bosses. You just have to be good at the levels. <laughs> because if you can make it through the through the levels cleanly most of the time, you can just stand there and just tank hits from the boss and have a real easy time. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a it's a it's a tough game, and it takes a it takes a lot of practice to be able to get through the levels cleanly. But once you can, most of the bosses take care of themselves. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing anything to defend myself against Medusa. It's just a matter of just showing up with enough health that I can, I can wipe her out before she can uh, take me down.
That skeleton is too enthusiastic for his own good. <laughs> That's so funny, was watching him throw himself into the abyss. I gotta bother with that guy. <laughs> So no. See when I when I when I get good at the run and I'm and I'm starting to be strict about the rules, like it's gonna be a shame because something like that would, would kill a run if I were uh, if I were going for it for real. Can't call it whip only if I'm if I'm picking up rosaries. <laughs> I had no I had no choice. Just show up with a lot of health in your pocket and tank all their hits. Frankenstein, uh, on this level, Frankenstein is the first boss that that doesn't really work with. Well, it doesn't work with the bat either. Medusa and the mummies, they're, they're pretty easy to take out. I got lucky there wasn't an early bat on that platform. That's always nice. That was great. That was like optimal RNG for me. That's exactly how I want that room to look. Yeah, the bat is tough, and Frankenstein. Frankenstein is not super hard. The bat's harder than Frankenstein because the bat can't uh, always be hit. Frankenstein, you can kind of go for him at any time. Medusa and the mummies are easy. Death is impossible. Dracula 1 is easy, and Dracula 2... Um, Dracula 2 is getting better. I've learned a lot about Dracula 2 in the past couple runs. It's, uh, you have a very high degree of influence over his movements. So that, that fight is getting easier all the time. Death is not, though. Back 
off, Frankenstein. Oh, victory. Nice. Um, I used to do a lot of Chrono Cross speedruns. A bunch of things like uh, stats RNGs or stealing RNG could ruin a run. Just make it one to six hours completely useless. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I couldn't, I could, I don't think I would ever want to do a speed run of a game that's where the speed run is that long. It's, it's heartbreaking enough to lose a run that's only like 20 or 30 minutes long. I can't imagine losing a run six hours in. I would cry so many tears that I would cry all the moisture out of my body and I would die of dehydration. Uh, Diva, welcome in. Thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you're well. NES takes me back. I love it. This is uh, this is my kind of stuff. The NES is my favorite console. I like a lot of uh, you know I, I I like a lot of the retro consoles, but I think NES is my favorite. I love the eight bits. Oh no! Oh, thank you for the follow as well. Diva. Thank you for that. Appreciate having you on board with us. Uh, sorry, hi, I was born in 84. I was born right around that time. I'm, uh, I'm basically the, I'm basically the same age as the, uh, NES. <clears throat> the first the first video games I ever played were actually on the uh, Commodore 64. That was the way I that was the way I first uh, was introduced to video games. But the uh, the NES is where like video games really became like my thing. <laughs> Where it was like my number one hobby. I actually didn't have this game as a kid, though. I didn't. Uh, I didn't ever play this game for the until I was well into my adulthood. I probably wouldn't have liked this game as a kid because uh, I didn't like I didn't like really hard games when I was young. It's only uh, it's only as I've uh, it's only as I've uh... as I've aged that I've learned to appreciate. Intense levels of brutality in my games. I had an Atari, but we never got to hook it up. We had... I know we had an Atari. Uh, uh, an Atari uh, 2600 when I was a kid. For a while as well. And... Uh, I'm sure we hooked it up, but I don't remember a single thing about it. The only thing I remember is that we had it. I don't remember what games I had or anything. It's a complete blank. I remember it was a ver it was the version of the console that has like the fake wood paneling on it. And I remember we had some of those uh this is this is awful. This hallway is going this hallway is going as bad as it possibly can. We had those uh controllers that had the like twisty panels uh paddles on them, but uh I don't remember what we played with it. It's weird.
No. Well, we made it to death on a single life. That's actually, I've actually done that a couple of times. Made it there in a single life. You know, the one, the one credit clear is still alive though. Rip the deathless run, but the one credit clear is still a possibility. None of us were tech savvy. Um, because they had those adapters, um, that you had to screw in. Yeah, the, uh, the, uh, RF, uh, the RF signal where it, where, yeah, you, you have to basically unscrew the antenna and screw the game in instead. I know what you're talking about. Had those little metal prongs on the end of the wire that always get twisted and break off. Uh, next up, track made using a Rico 2A03 NES sound chip. A lot more basic and limited, though. The uh, the NES is more limited than the C64, sound-wise. I didn't know that. I don't disagree. I just don't think I don't think I knew. You probably told me and I just forgot. Uh oh, my coffee is here. Give me uh, just a moment, my friends. All right. Um isn't like a hallelujah hall of fame of games behind you retro? Uh, you mean my my bookshelf back there, my game shelf. I'll blow it up uh, real quick. I still probably can't see all that well, but uh, yeah, I've got a, I have a pretty nice collection of retro games. I, uh, uh, I've got my NES here on the column on the right. I've got Super Nintendo in the middle, and I've got Sega Genesis on the left. And I have another bookshelf just like this, a little bit deeper down. That's got a, a row of a. Uh, Atari 2600 games, and a row of N64 games, and then just a few random things from other stuff. I have a, I have a fair amount of a games on a retro consoles that use discs too, but those are all in sleeves. I don't have cases for. 90% of those games. They're pretty much all loose. Uh, Conga, welcome in. Uh, I always keep an eye on the stream starting, and I'm always 40 minutes late. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I do wish I were more consistent with my start time. Like it, it is unfortunate that it's sort of a two that it's sort of a two hour window. I could start up any time within. Um, I am, it is a goal of mine to eventually be consistent, but it's not, it's not super easy. Um, I've seen a guy on YouTube who has stacks and stacks and stacks of old retro games and new games and new games in his basement, I think. Yeah, there's a, a collecting retro stuff is a pretty popular hobby. Uh, I'm just real lucky because I, I started buying a, I started buying retro games a long time ago when it was really affordable. <laughs> when it was really cheap to pick up old games. That's the only reason I have as many as I do. Because, uh, yeah, if I were to start collecting nowadays, there's no way I could afford it. Uh... Don't mean to put Rob down. I know he's in Smash and everything, but his retro game. <laughs> I've never actually played. Well, that's not true. 
I've never, uh, well, I was going to say I've never played any of Rob's games, but that's not true. I have played Gyromite, but I've only played it, I haven't ever played it with the robot. <laughs> I would play Gyromite with my, uh, I would play Gyromite with my sister. And I would, uh, I would control the doctor and she would control the pipes. Which, <laughs> which kind of led to a running joke among us. <laughs> where my sister is sometimes just known as the pipes. She put that as her. Uh, she put that as her bio on one of her so social media profiles once. She wrote, she just wrote always the pipes. <laughs> which is a pretty which is a pretty funny joke that only three people in the world get. <laughs> I guess four. <laughs> I counted wrong. I'm doing real bad here. This is where it, uh, this is where it falls apart for me. <laughs> You see, I can make it to death. I can make it to death on a single life, but I, death is so difficult to defeat. It's probably going to take me like 30 more tries. <laughs> this game makes it look like your brain makes it makes it look like your brain wants to leave your head and move out. Uh that's a pretty good description. Uh, I'll catch up. Uh, I'm going to catch up with that in just a moment, Sparrow. whole battle might have been different if I had landed that one hit. No! No! My whip went right through that scythe. <laughs> I demand a recount. All right, let me catch up here. Where the Sid chip shines, very similar in architecture to the mini Moog. Granted, it's a lot more lo-fi sounding, but things like a uh, filter which can dull and brighten tones programmatically is what can set it apart. But anything is, seems to have really been properly taken advantage of. All right, you were talking about Gyromite. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's the uh, that's the only one I've played because I know there's the uh, the stacking game too, but I haven't played that one. Focus was more about squeezing as much as you could out of three sound channels by rapidly switching between tones uh, to give the impression you're playing a chord. Uh, a mate of mine heard the track and said I should screen record it and time lapse it on YouTube. I still couldn't imagine anything more terrifying. The way I work with music is a complete uh, bungle, mashing notes until something sounds kind of right, but probably technically isn't. Uh, there is no, there is no right or wrong in music, right, Sparrow? It just needs to, uh, it just needs to, uh, sound good. If it sounds good, it's right. If it doesn't, it's wrong. Unless I guess your goal is to make something that sounds bad. Then reverse that. <laughs> uh... My first game was Super Mario and Duck Hunt. And my uh, my first game was Ghostbusters on, on the C64. Very, very rough introduction to video games. Ghostbusters is the answer I always give. I don't actually remember, like, I don't have a memory of the first time I ever played a video game, but Ghostbusters is the most likely candidate. That or Donkey Kong on the C64, but, you know, Ghostbusters is the funny answer, so that's the one I give. It's accurate enough. That's terrible. Terrible. I made it here with all my health and I did nothing with it. Just throw it all away. Ugh. Oh. Rip the one CC. <laughs> it's not gonna happen, my friends. I will hear no hatred of Ghostbusters on the C64. I mean, it's better than... It's probably the best version of that game. faint praise. <laughs> I think you misunderstand me, you know. It's one of my childhood games, so of course I love it. But it is not very good. <laughs> We played it on the stream, but I didn't do very well. We only played it once. We should give it another uh, try. Probably need a Game Shark for Ghostbusters. You you definitely do for the NES one. Um, oh, Christian Cool, welcome to the stream. Hey, thank you for the bits. Thank you for the 100 bits, my friend. 
Hanging out while doing my thing. Whip only. Gave me some shivers thinking about this boss. It terrifies me. It terrifies me every time. I've been doing a, I've been doing a lot of whip only runs lately. And I, I, you know, I have beaten the game whip only a handful of times now. It's just like I'm I'm getting pretty good at all the game except death. This is the only part I can't get good at. I think I'll learn I think I'll learn the the entire rest of the game damageless before I learn before I learn death whip only. It's so hard. Uh, I wonder which kid actually made it through the whole Ghostbusters game on the NES. I mean, that the the stairs, the stairs at the end of Ghostbusters NES are just impossible. I think there's a I think there's a a glitch to get you through. Actually, you know what? I think they're not impossible. Because I always forget. So I think you can get your health refilled during that section. The thing is, there's like there's like all these like a hundred flights of stairs, but there's a door on every level, and some of the doors kill you, and some of the doors give you uh your health back. And so through trial and error, you can learn what doors have what and brute force your way through it. But it would take years. It would take years. The uh, the Commodore, as I recall, the Commodore version does not have that stairwell. It has a different obstacle where you have to run underneath uh, Stay Puft's uh, foot to get into the building. You have to time. Uh, you have to time a run beneath his foot it's it's a really hard but it's nothing like that stairwell first games i can remember are duck hunt super mario bros and legend of zelda on the nes tusk says yeah mario bros on the uh, on the nes is where i got like serious about video games i played and enjoyed games on the c64 but it, the the nes was where it really took off Anybody play Back to the Future on NES? That one I've never played. Maybe it's the Mandela effect, but I swear I played a light gun version of Duck Hunt that was projected on a giant screen. No, you're right. You're right about that. There was a pre-NES duck hunt. I don't know a lot about it, but I know it exists. I'm dying in the first room. I I'm I'm trash at this game. <laughs> Someone call Dracula. Tell him he wins. Some people said that Duck Hunt had glitches. I uh, I don't know about the glitches for the game. I played a played a bit of Duck Hunt, but I never played it as much as I played Mario. Duck Hunt was always just okay. It was never one of my favorites.
Hello, Dr. Acula. Your appointment has been canceled. They say you win. <laughs> Played it at Showbiz Pizza. I went to a, I went to a Showbiz Pizza like two or three times as a kid, or a Chuck E. Cheese. Um, I went to each once or twice, um, but it was a, it was a, a very, very rare thing. I always like playing a ski ball. I'm terrible at it, though. <laughs> I think my all-time favorite was the Battletoads and Double Dragon crossover. I haven't played that one yet either. I've only played double the the original uh, Double Dragon, just the first one. I haven't played uh I haven't played Battletoads or the crossover game. I have uh, copies of them. I don't have the I don't have the the crossover on NES. I have it on Super Nintendo. So it's not quite the same game. You'd be re you'd be really surprised because I have all these like I have all these games behind me. I have a lot of games in my collection. I have never played so many of them. Fortunately, the stream is helping me get caught back up with that. The stream, the stream is helping out a lot with that. It'd be helping out a lot more if I didn't, you know, constantly replay the same games a whole lot. But what can I say? I like doing challenge runs. I can't believe I got out of that mess. No. That's the best we've done tonight. Trauma Turtle, welcome in. Happy Thursday, my friend. That's why I'm getting back at them at the moment. The uh, you got the uh, you have the the uh, gaming backlog issue as well. Yeah, me right on. On Sega and SNES, the Battletoads Double Dragon. Yeah, it it was on uh, NES as well, I believe. I think that think the NES version of it's pretty rare. But I think it was actually on all three.
I bet I had a hard time on any NES games as a kid. All of them. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I never really beat that many games when I was a kid. I've definitely I've beaten more games as an adult than I than I ever even played as a kid. <laughs> Much less beat. It's hard for me, like, like, I talk about how I had an NES when I was real young. It's hard for me to even remember what a lot of my games were on the NES. It's hard for me to think of which ones I had. I know we had Mario Bros. and Duck Hunt, and I know we had Mario 3. I had Super Sprint, and I had Bartman meets Radioactive Man. trying to remember. I feel like I had to have had more games than that, but those are the only ones I can remember right away. I can't think of another game. I can't think of another one that I actually owned. I know, like I remember renting a lot of them. But those four are the only ones I can think of that I owned as a child. There has to be more. No, it's just empty. For the Super Nintendo, I had Super Ghouls and Ghosts and Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Mario World and Mario All-Stars, The Lion King. Um, Yoshi's Island. Sim City. Sim City I got later, though. I didn't get that until the Nintendo 64 was already out, I think. Ultraman Toward the Future. I might be close to it. You ever play, spend like 24 hours on them on the weekends? All the time. I remember always, always wanting to, uh, to stay up until the sun, until the stun sunrise on weekends when I was a kid. And my parents being so annoyed with me because then all I would do is sleep the whole day the next day. Still know all the games I had. Bucky O'Hare was quite hard. Older sister loved to excite bike. Um, got 600k people on SimCity to get their real ending. I, uh, I recall you mentioning that. And uh, again, GG. That's no easy task. 
played Aladdin and the Lion King and failed miserably. Yeah, I didn't own Aladdin, but one of my but my cousin had it, and I would play it with him. The Lion King I owned, but I was never any good at it. I could make it I could make it about halfway through the Lion King, I think. No, I picked up a holy water. Gross. No one wants an item. A useless item in their inventory. It's good at DuckTales. DuckTales I've only played once. We played part of it on the stream. I got pretty far, but I, did, I didn't beat it yet. We'll have to do it again. Last time I couldn't even clear the first screen, and now I'm... Now I've made it through without any uh, damage. Beat DuckTales 2, like, uh, in 9 to 11 minutes most of the time. beat Aladdin some days ago for the first time. It was always hard for me before. I remember that game being more difficult when I was young. <laughs> Just picking about every item. <laughs> That's it's no good. Making all the mistakes. I stopped moving and things got real easy.
I don't think that could possibly be the trick. But I got real lucky. Oh, we're out of there. Alright, let's see how stage six goes. Ah, uh, leave me alone, bat! Stage six is terrible. Uh. That was my problem. I shouldn't have hit him. No, I missed my jump. Stage six is going awful. Why is every bat hitting me? Uh. Believe it or not, I can make it through stage six without losing any lives. I just can't do it very often. That was the worst ever. I can't do anything about this skeleton. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I have to do the part with the bats again now. Gross. Why do I like this game? Give me a whip power up. Uh. Don't play Castlevania, it only makes you sad. <laughs> No! Get it out of my pocket. <sighs> I got so used to not getting what I want there. <laughs> That was hideous. That was hideous.
Previously, my strategy had been to uh, get him to spawn on one of the edges of the room, but... Uh-oh. I understand how to manipulate him a little better now, so that's not actually necessary. hit Arrgh. that's so, that's so infuriating uh, why couldn't he just have killed me at the start oh <sighs> why oh, did he have to make me waste all that time Hopefully, you know, you've seen, I have uh, at least learned to manipulate the cookie monster now, so. Like, while, while death is still impossible and I have no strategy, every other part of the game, like, I have strategies that sometimes work. <laughs> Cows, welcome in. Great to see you, my friend. Things are going things are going better right now. They were going horrible a moment ago. I've learned how to manipulate the cookie monster. I can make him jump high whenever I want. And sometimes when I don't want. Let's have another high jump. There we go. Damageless Dracula, both phases. Let's go. They said it couldn't be done. And yet here we are. Finally have a giant drink of coffee. It's at the perfect temperature. <laughs> Where it's, uh... It's not too cold, but it's very drinkable. Oh. So we made it all the way to we made it all the way to death in a glorious run. And then I lost a thousand lives to death and was there for an hour. I stumbled a little bit on stage six, and then we got a, a beautiful Dracula there at the end. And now we're gonna do it again. I think we'll just be doing two runs of this tonight. <laughs> it's distressing. It's distressing how I'm not getting any better at death. Like, I'm glad I'm getting better at other parts of the game. <laughs> but I'm just... 
there is no improving the death fight. Also, I updated the schedule um, earlier. There probably won't be a stream tomorrow night. I wouldn't normally stream on uh, Friday evenings, but... Jelly is going to be taking a trip for work next week. And so... I think we need the extra evening uh, in this weekend, since we're not going to have that time on Sunday. But since there won't be a stream, since there probably won't be a stream tomorrow night, um, there may be one on, there may actually be one on Sunday night. Hope Jelly has a good trip. I, uh, I will relay your, uh, your well wishes to, to her for you, uh, cows. Thank you for that. Sounds like she's uh sounds like she's gonna have a good time. They've, it's some sort of a some sort of library conference, and it sounds like they've uh they booked her some really nice accommodations. As much as I like the Castlevania music, I kind of like the no music glitch. I kind of like when it happens. No, that guy is that's I'm gonna hit reset. <laughs> I know we're not on stage one, but I can do better than that. I don't know what I was thinking. I mean I guess clearly I was thinking that guy could be taken out in one hit. Also on that first screen, like a cloud flies in front of the moon. I'd like to see a Christmas themed ROM hack of a Castlevania where that cloud that flies in front of the moon is replaced with the silhouette of Santa and his reindeer.
I like to see Santa in place of Simon. <laughs> Santa Claus is an underutilized protagonist. I don't know, there sure seem to be a lot of films with him in a with him in a starring role. <laughs> I mean, in games, okay. <laughs> Jelly has a thing. Uh, she's very, she's very terrified of a. Uh, like uh mascot costumes and uh and people that are made out of plastic <laughs> like uh like like the the burger king and so the santa claus 2 with Tim Allen is like a horror movie for her. <laughs> if Santa were in Smash Bros, I'd be a Kringle main. <laughs> I didn't even have a problem with mascots like Jelly does, and it was still disconcerting, Cow says. <laughs> Greg's Retro Channel, welcome in, Greg. Thank you again for, uh... Thank you again for kind of shouting me out on your, uh, on your channel, uh, in your, uh, in your NES video, Greg. I was watching part of it. I kind of skimmed through. I didn't want to watch the segments on games I haven't played yet. Like you started off with Kid Icarus, and so I like I didn't want to watch that because I haven't played that one yet. But I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that you picked up uh, Castlevania again, and are sort of sort of rediscovering how to have fun with it. <laughs> Castlevania run Castlevania runs are what they are. I'm 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 really like I really feel solid all the way up until death. And then it falls apart. And it's a it's a miserable slog until I finally defeat death and then uh, and then it's okay again. It's so weird. 
It's so weird to have just one part of the game that I'm so terrible at. And I can do all, and I can do so much of the rest of it so decently. This is going badly. Get this ghost away from me. What? All right. Well, I know how to not spawn that ghost now, so that ghost spawn, oh, that ghost doesn't spawn if you drop off those bricks on the left there. Oh, Conga, thank you for the uh, resub. Thank you for the three months. It's been a joy to have you here with us this time, and I, uh, I do very much appreciate the support. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Hallway before the battle and then death himself. I'm not even... See, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point I'm not even really afraid of the hallway. I mean, I know I don't always get through it. <laughs> I don't always get through it, but... At least I sometimes do. Death I can just never defeat reliably. I would use an enthusiastic emote, but they all appear to be frowning. <laughs> yeah, I like my uh, I like my consistent theming. My emotes, unfortunately, my emotes don't have very wide use outside of this channel, but they're all. It's like, on the one hand, it's nice that they're all consistently themed for the channel, but on the other hand, it's kind of a shame because, like, they're not emotes that you really would ever want to use while in the chat on another channel because they're all, they all look negative if you don't understand where they come from. <laughs> Aside, you know, from, uh, you know, maybe the tombstone works, but... Yes. It's very on brand, yeah. He is, this is the Agent Frowny channel, and yet no one laughs more than Frowny, Conga adds. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine what the stream would be like if I couldn't laugh at my mistakes? Okay, messed up a little bit there, but we got back on track. <clears throat> we have a good dragon fight here. We can uh, maybe even, well, nope. I was going to say we maybe even have full health, but not anymore. Uh.
No, I'm gonna die. Rip. Why is this dragon so hard now? It looks like I have more health than last time, but I don't necessarily think I do because we, you lose your health in chunks. Uh, I can maybe take one more hit than I could last time. Didn't matter. We made it through. The Deathless Run is dead. The 1cc is still alive for now. We're at the hour and 40 minute mark. If we if we hit credits before the two hour mark, we might do a third run after all. That's not super likely, but. I'm thinking it might be worth it. Dark Souls will still get plenty of time. I'm at an interesting little spot in Dark Souls right now because I, uh, I have no idea what to do next. I made it to an area and I feel kind of trapped, like there's no... There's a door I can't go through and a jump I can't jump across, and I don't see anything else that leads to anywhere, so... We're gonna, we're gonna start off with a, a, a fair big, a fairly big chunk of confusion, I think.
I saw... I saw death about to land on me just a little bit too late. I placed uh, I placed an, an order today. I don't know. I hope it's going to come in, but uh, I placed an order today for a uh, for a small set of games, all on a uh, all on a particular theme. So you know, we may have a we may have another sort of character themed marathon coming up in the uh, coming up in the future. <laughs> Something, uh, something in lines with the, uh, the Scooby-Doo that we did. In other words, I'm already preparing for January. <laughs> When are you not preparing for January? <laughs> Talk about getting ready for something early. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like... The Scooby-Doo and the Powerpuff Girls, like... I, I assembled that collection of games over a... Uh, over a long period of time. <laughs> you know, for something for something like for something like that with that many games, like you kinda have to prepare in advance. But in this case I just I just kinda got lucky and someone was offering Someone was offering a set of a uh, of pretty much every title I wanted, so.
I think I'm locked in. If I weren't, if I weren't as bad at jumping out into those ledges as I am, those ledges are a real problem for me, and they could be a real solution. Like they're one of the, they're one of the safest areas to be. That was gonna be it. I didn't see that one on the top. The scythes is just... The thing about the scythes is, like, when they spawn, like... Sometimes they spin in place for like a half an hour before they start to move. And sometimes I swear they're moving before they're even finished spawning. No! <sighs> oh, I hate everything. <laughs> Rip the one CC. <laughs> It's so aggravating. It's so aggravating to, to kill death and then have his side thing around. 
and prevent you from winning. I can't believe the scythes don't despawn when he dies. Have to get a very early start, janky where he sneaks up on you. I mean, I'm fairly... There's a, there's a, there's a, a couple, there's a couple more things that I need to pick up for, you know, what I, what I hope to accomplish in the next couple months, but I, like, you know, I've got a pretty solid idea of, like, Some kind of fun things that we can do around, you know, Thanksgiving and then Christmas and then the whole month of January. Stop following me around, Death. <sighs> it's just, you know, it's almost like they didn't want you to play the game this way. <laughs> This could have been a good attempt, but I'm I'm still frustrated and I'm playing so sloppy. 
but things are going really good for a, a brief window there. Uh. I should run two timers out of curiosity. I should run a timer for for a whole uh, playthrough through this, and I should run a separate timer for just from the moment we first reach death until we defeat him, and see how much longer this death battle lasts than the whole rest of the game. <laughs> Because I think, like, in an hour-long run, I probably spend 50 minutes on this death part. I don't think I'm making it through the whole rest of the game in 10 minutes. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's sort of what the proportions are like. I'm here for, I'm here for so much longer than I am in the whole rest of the game. Down there, I always die. Why is it so hard? Uh, it's so it's so frustrating. One because it's so difficult, but also I just I'm so frustrated that I never get any better at it. I never learn anything. I'm just uh. Let's just do something completely different. All right, I've never started out over there before. Seems like all that does is get me hit, though. A 
lot. Where did that skeleton... how... what? And the flea man isn't even doing what he's supposed to do. The game is just... everyone's just doing whatever they want. It's anarchy. All the NPCs have abandoned their programming. do anything good anymore. <laughs> uh. I just want to throw, I just want to throw these lives away and start fresh. <laughs> I'm in too much distress. Somebody send help. <laughs> The scariest thing is, this isn't even the worst I'm going to be suffering tonight. <laughs> In about an hour, I'm going to be wishing I was still stuck here. <laughs>
What do you say we start a tradition next month? We'll call it we'll call it No Stress November, and I'll just do a marathon of the easiest games I can find. If you do that, December has to be brutal. Uh, you know I never would. I'm addicted to this agony. I would be more likely to do a No Hope November. <laughs> I learned something that I kind of already knew, but that I didn't think about before. I don't know if it's going to be useful at all, but... The size, it looks like the pattern the scythes spawn in is affected by Simon's position. Which I kind of already knew, of course. But... For the first time, like, I was kind of thinking about trying to notice where they spawn, depending on which of those floor tiles Simon is on. I'm wondering if I can look into that and see if I can find, like, what is the optimal tile to be standing on? Like, what, what, which tile puts the scythes in the most friendly position? I can't reliably stand on the same tile all the time because death is moving around. Unless I figure out a way to manipulate his movements. I think the window is actually even larger than a tile. crazy to think that there are people out there doing this. 
They're doing the same thing and they're not even powering up the whip. What was that? Just, I would be better at this fight if I just did it with my eyes closed, right? If I just didn't even look at the screen and just jumped around and pressed random buttons, I would have a higher success rate than when I actually try to fight. Master Tuesday, welcome in. Happy Tuesday, my friend. Thank you for the stretch break. I need it. I need it. I'm a, this, this is a bad, this challenge is bad for my health. <laughs> this challenge is bad for my health. It puts me in a, it puts, puts me in such a irritated state. Ah. <sighs> Let's uh let's take a break and stretch. 
Hope it's going better for you than it is for me. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear you're not doing well, uh, Tuesday. I feel like I haven't, uh, I feel like I haven't had the opportunity to enjoy having you here for the stream in a while. You have, a uh, you have been missed, my friend. I know I don't want to pry into your situation Tuesday, but I I do uh, I do want you to know that I I hope that whatever it is that uh, seems to have been ruining ruining your day, I hope that it is uh, something that turns around for you. Alright, we hit the checkpoint.
Nothing to worry about. Just finding some things a bit frustratingly difficult is all. Nothing that won't turn around eventually. Oh, we have a raid coming in. Nice. Uh, Intoxicate, welcome in. Welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> Very happy to have you here uh, with us. Tell us uh, about your stream tonight. What were you up to and how did it go? I hope it went a lot better than Castlevania's going for me. <sighs> Death is repeatedly brutalizing me. We've been here a while. We've been here a while, and I am I'm in distress. <laughs> uh, I don't re recommend approaching death without the holy water. <laughs> it's bad for your sanity and your happiness. Uh, just beat this the other night in your roulette. Right on. I love Castlevania. I love this game. And I actually like playing it whip only. But this death battle is just so terrible. How many, how many different uh, consoles do you have in your Retro Roulette? Because it's not... Um, if you don't know, um, my friends in Intoxicade streams... Uh, does a Retro Roulette on his stream. And it shuffles uh, not just between games, but between different consoles. Every, uh, every, every few minutes into a completely different game. It sounds like a, it sounds like a fascinating way to play and an absolutely terrifying way to play. But I know you've—I know you've got just tons and tons of games in there. But I was wondering how many consoles. Oh, we made it through. You can't. It turns out you came in at a great time. We were there for 50 minutes. Stage five took 50 minutes. NES, SNES, N64, GB, GBA, NDS. Oh, it has. I don't think I. I don't think I knew it had DS games in it. Mega Drive, Genesis, CD, Saturn, PlayStation One, Turbo Graphics, and the CD. But it has some Atari stuff and other things in there too.
see, knowing my luck, it would just shuffle on an endless loop between Echo, E.T., and Superman 64. <laughs> oh no. I get so used to it not giving me what I want that when it does I uh, I don't recognize it you've got Mario 64 DS and Phoenix right in there My uh, my sister really loves the uh, Phoenix Wright games. She's kind of she's kind of the opposite of me. She likes games with a whole lot of story in them. Just go. I got real lucky there. So I've been doing uh, I've been doing a lot of whip only playthroughs of this lately, and I can make it all the way to death on a single life, and then I'm just stuck there for forever. And then when I get to stage six, I'm not great at stage six, but I'm decent at it. And the Dracula fight on our we did it we just did a run of this uh. I mean, about an hour ago we finished it. Uh, but we started the stream. We've already done one complete run. And I made it through Dracula without taking a single piece of damage on my second attempt. I think it was the second attempt. Both phases. So, like, I've gotten, I've gotten pretty good at the whole game, except death. victory look at that that's i can demolish dracula there's nothing that guy can do to me oh, it's the exact opposite of the death battle i couldn't do that i couldn't do that a, a week ago i just uh i just figured out like the last piece for how to manipulate him um, last night to get him to do the get him to do the high jump by not attacking him I didn't figure that out until last night 
Uh. <sighs> Thank you for the trophies, cows. It's just evil. It's just evil how hard this game is. <laughs> it's so distressing. I don't know what I don't know what I can do to get better at death. He is the one obstacle to having a great playthrough of this game. He's the only thing I don't know how to fight. And it's so and it's so hopeless. All right, but we made it through, my friends. Thank you for uh, thank you for sticking by me through all those tough times. Uh, the night it, w it was a horrible night to have a curse. I thought I'd never see the sun again. But uh, we're uh, we're done with Castlevania. Let's let's. It's time to play an easy game. Let's play some Dark Souls. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired of these hard games. I don't want to turn that off yet. Let me just uh, update my stream data here and we'll get switched over. I don't think I need to take a BRB just yet. Changing the uh, capture device is always a somewhat clunky process, so just uh, bear with me a moment, please. Oh, thank you for the GG's, Conga. Uh, 